What up, y'all? Appreciate you showing up, hanging out, listening to my dumb ass. Like and subscribe. So, thanks again for uh, showing some love to Hoglaw. Uh, virtual legality. That's his, uh, well, the, the YouTube channel is Hoglog, but Hoglaw. H O E G. Law. But, um, did I spell that? Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, man, we gotta show him love and all that good stuff. But anyway, I have been playing, um, Wu, Wu, the Dynasty game. Wu, Wu Long? Yeah, Wu Long. Dynasty. That's what it's called. Team Ninja game. It's supposed to be a Souls like. It is a Souls like. Um,. I don't know if I like Souls-like games. I'm going to keep on playing it. But I got to, like, the first... I forgot what they call it. Flag thing. But it's a bonfire, basically. And I was like, okay. I died, like, three times before that. Because I was like, what? I don't... How am I? What is going on? You know? I'm so used to, <clears throat> like, kind of open world games. Going back to something that's, like... More of a Metroid-ish. Tangent real quick. Metroid uh, Fusion or Metroid Prime remake and all that stuff that that came out recently, right? And the people who swear that they're Nintendo fans keep referring to it as a Metroid or a Metroidvania, and I'm like, you don't, you don't do that. That's the original game where the reference comes from. You don't say Metroidvania when you're talking about a Metroid game. It's Metroid. That's it. That's, yeah, it's, there's no, <laughs> that was just one thing, I, that was in my brain real quick, I was like, huh, why are these fools talking, saying Metroidvania, and they talk about Metro, anyway, Wulong, um, I met a lady, she's pretty, she's like, yo, I got muscle, <laughs> she double sword, and I was like, you know, double sword's weak, let me use that long, uh, the long staff with the blade on the end, and you know, you usually see it when, uh, when like Jackie Chan's people are like, well, back in the day when they're doing like, not the movies, but they're doing like exhibitions and they have like the fake swords where the, the, the metal's all like, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, I had that weapon and I'm stabbing fools on the back. I was like, yeah, all right. But I'm dying real quick. So that's that's the game I understand what the game is you know I understand the souls like where you play it and play it and play it to level up to level up to level up to level up so you could be like yo I'm gonna just clear out this first level real quick because I'm so leveled up I get it you know it's the power fantasy it's that's what video game that's what a good video game does well like vampire survivors is basically it's a power trip, pow, a level, a, <laughs> excuse me, it's a power trip game. You get up to a certain level, you kill an you don't even do, you just sit back and do like this and all the monsters, they all explode in because you're just so powerful. You know, that's what, that's what, you're, that's, that's what a good game does. Uh, I mean, you got to work at it a little bit and that's, that's the challenge, right? To, to, to balance the, the actual difficulty or the challenge to get to that level. If you make it too easy, it's boring. If you make it too difficult, it's most of the Souls games. <laughs> most of FromSoft games. Um, I don't know what Wulong is yet. I'm going to keep playing it. I don't think it's too difficult. Um, it feels like a pretty fair game in the middle. So I'm going to keep playing it. Uh, I'm playing on Xbox Series S with uh, frame rate prioritized. I might switch to graphics to see if it looks any better. I don't think it will. I'm playing on a 1080p screen, so it doesn't matter. I don't, you know, 4K doesn't matter. And um, that's another thing I want to talk about. Um, people are, there's a whole bunch of guys out there, influencers, if you will, talking about, oh, the Xbox Series X is holding people back, and developers are saying, oh, we can't, you know, because, uh, what was it, Age of Empires or something? No, no, Baldur's Gate 3. They were like, oh, we can't do it because of the parody, and we can't make it, the split screen, split screen can't work, and I'm like, I'm like, mm, okay, whatever, uh, they can make it work, I'm just, mm, something seems a little fishy, uh, but... That is a bunch of BS. Let me say why. The Nintendo Switch exists, right? So if you have a game, is Baldur's Gate 3 on Nintendo Switch? Probably not. But it can be, right? So 
I don't know if the parody thing with Xbox is saying you have to put it on both systems says that, oh yeah, you have to make the Xbox Series S perform as good as the Xbox Series X. That makes no sense. They know that does that, that they know that doesn't make sense. So the concession should be whatever. Put it at the re- resolution that you need to. Use a v- VRRS, whatever, to bump it back up or whatever. If the resolution is trash, who cares? Just get, get this frame rate steady. That's all. You know, optimize it. And the thing is, all these devs are leading with PlayStation, right? PlayStation 5, per se, I would say, for the most part. And not even. And the proof is that some PC versions of these games come out, you know, PlayStation 5, PC, Xbox, the PC version's broken. So, and the, and the, and the PlayStation 5 version, perfectly fine, beautiful. So you know they're prioritizing PlayStation 5 hardware, you know they're optimizing for that first, and then throwing them on the other you know, consoles and and and, and PCs, and, and whatever, we'll fix it later, you know, and then they're acting like, oh, it's because Microsoft said, like, no, you didn't optimize for Xbox Series S or X, the fact that the X can do it is because it's so powerful, but you didn't optimize for it, you optimized for the PlayStation 5 version and the PC version, that's it, that's it, that's it, simple, if you can't see it, then you're not looking, and so... When these devs say, oh, dude, we can't get it, that's bull. It's bull. You got to take time to make it work. That's it. Like, what's the lowest spec on PC? Bet you it's lower than the Xbox Series S. So why can't you make it work on that Series S again? Why? Oh, because it doesn't have enough RAM? Well, you know. But, I mean, they, they're going to have all the excuses. So all I'm saying is that if Baldur's Gate 3 ends up on the Switch, then you know something's up. <laughs> I don't even know if it's, if it's coming out for the Switch. But if it is, then just port that Switch to the Series S. Then, yeah. Let Microsoft... I mean, Microsoft... If, if it is really Microsoft that's kind of uh, having these strict rules and stuff, as far as parity goes for their consoles, then they need to lighten up. They need to be like, yo, the S is, is weak. It has... You know, you got to make some changes. You got to make some uh, concessions, some compromises for... Uh, you know, for it to run at 60 frames, I, I would say that frame rate over resolution, period. You know, that's it. I don't care if it's 240p, 480p, 60 frames, let's go. You know, but, you know, I keep seeing the other the other side. You know, they, they're they blaming Microsoft right now, which is, there is that, that does exist, the, the parity clause, you know. But when I'm looking at PC versions, of games that are on PS5 that run like hot trash garbage when there's no reason why it should run like that because PC is the ultimate box you cannot tell me that the strongest PC is not better than the PlayStation 5 because if you do you're crazy and you're a pony or donkey unicorn probably both but that's what people want you to believe oh the PlayStation 5 is so good that it's better than PC it's like no it's not the devs are not optimizing for PC and so the devs are complicit in this false narrative of oh PlayStation 5 is better it's not you're making it better on this you're literally saying we're gonna make the best version on the PlayStation 5 everybody else gets the garbage and then you know let the let the let the public run with it it's the same thing that Sony so so afraid of Xbox is gonna do put a lesser version of Call of Duty on a PlayStation 5 Man, I, it just makes me so mad. It makes me so sick sometimes because I'm like, everything that everyone is crying about is exactly what Sony's doing. It's exactly what is happening. Now, if this court doc, if these court documents come back and, and there's a clause or some language in there that says you got to make our version better or you got to prioritize our version or our version has to be the best first out the gate or so, something like that or you have to optimize for us first or something like that then that's that's damning that's like crazy crazy and i mean is it is it good is it, good? Is it a big deal yes is it going to be a big deal no because the ponies and the duck unicorns will be like oh what huh? i don't know they're gonna be like horses with blinders on they can't see nothing they can't see nothing but the greatness right so you know it's it, so disappointing sickening whatever you want to call it and I see it, and it makes me want. It makes me not want to be a part of this sometimes. I mean, that's not. Uh, that's a little bit. Uh, 
It just gives me a bad feeling. Let's just put it that way. I always go and play video games. I can always, I can always compartmentalize all the BS, all the politic, and all, all the BS that the uh, these companies do, and I can say and go back into my memory banks and be like, "Welcome to the fantasy zone. Get ready." And then I'm good. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember that feeling. Oh, I feel it. I feel it a little bit right now. So good. So, you know, whenever, I guess, the moral of the story. Just make more noise. He's just throwing stuff. Anyway, I feel like Jerry Springer. The moral of the story. The moral of the story is big dick, dick duke. You know how Jerry Springer be talking shit? Oh, he doesn't talk shit. He does that, to, and he t- tells a little moral. The moral of the story is when the BS around the world is getting to you, it's getting on your nerves. Try to think back when you were happy, happiest. You know, the first time you fell in love with something. It doesn't have to be a person. It can be. That's fine. It could be a pet. You know, try to remember the feeling, not so much the events that happen or anything, or maybe you want to do that just to bring the feeling up, but remember how you felt when it happened. Then you can say, all right, I'm okay. This this is worth it. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. And, you know, every day there's an opportunity to find that again, find that first love, to find that, oh, man video games this is the game that made me fall in oh snap i love me some cars yo that turbo on that whatever car it's crazy yo look at those rims that paint job is crazy whatever your i was gonna say fetish but (laughs) whatever your thing is try to find the thing that made it so made you fall in love with said hobby or interest or whatever maybe it's a book maybe it's a movie there's a whole bunch of stuff, you know, that I'm interested in. And, um, I mean, for video games, it was Space Harrier. I was about nine years old, I think. And we were on vacation driving from New York to Florida, and we stopped at a hotel. And back in the day, hotels had arcades. They had pools, and they had a little arcade room. This was in the 80s. And, um, they had Space Harrier. They had stand-up Space Harrier. I'd never seen Space Harrier before. I'm like, huh? Because we had a Nathan's near our house. And it was on off of Central Ave in Yonkers. So me and my cousin, my brother, and my friends, we would hop on our bikes, on our BMXs, and we would ride down to Central Lab. It's not, it's not close, but it's not far enough that we won't ride. It had to be probably five, six, uh, probably under 10 miles. It was probably under 10 miles. But more than five, somewhere in there. But anyway, but maybe not. I don't know. But we rode there, uh, lock them up, and I. Uh, they had Space Harrier. They had Dragon Slayer for the first time I seen it there. They had Outrun. I mean, like I said, first time I saw Space Harrier was in a hotel arcade. But Nathan's was where we would go get our fix. So I would go. Power Drift was there. All the games that like I was like ah, I was like another Yu Suzuki, another Sega game. Let's go. And I didn't say let's go because that was back in the day. I was like, yes, awesome, dude, radical. I didn't say that either. I was like, yo, that's dope. No, I didn't. How, what, what, what did I say? What did I t- sound like when I was nine years old? I probably said something like, oh, snap. Oh, that's hot. That's do- I probably said that's dope or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> I don't remember my, my, my vernacular from back in the day. It's all good, though. But, yeah. Remember what made you feel good inside. And try to keep those. Try not to forget those. Uh, as all the all the crazy stuff happens around you. you know? It works for me most of the time. So, hopefully it'll work for you. Try it. Maybe, maybe you'll like it. <laughs> I feel like I'm selling something. And now buy my book on a 79.23... Why is it 23 cents? Don't ask me. My publisher needs a certain amount of pennies, so that's why. Anyway, uh, <laughs> appreciate y'all hanging out. Let me know in the comment comments 
if y'all have played uh, Wo Long, if you like it, uh, where you're at in the game, and also what your happiness was. What your oh, I fell in love with this, that, and the third uh, when I was little or yesterday or whatever. Let me know what that 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 love that made you feel tingly, butterfly inside. Let me know in the comments. I, I'm I'm interested in, in different people's kind of uh, happy happiness. Happiness is contagious, so. My happy is your happy. Let's all be happy anyway. Appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all next time. Took a week.